Is it possible to sum up the Christian faith in a single word? If it is, that word might be forgiveness. The Bible, in all its different books encompassing a huge sweep of history, tells a story of how human beings, left to their own devices, get things wrong. Adam and Eve disobey God's instructions. Cain kills his brother Abel, and so on. And how, in Jesus Christ, God puts things right. This forgiveness works in two ways. First of all, it is about what happened on the cross. This is the centre of the Christian faith. On the cross, sins are forgiven. The Bible has different images and different stories to tell how this happens, but the simplest is the story of enduring and triumphant love. Jesus understood himself to be the one whose own life was to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. He struggles to come to terms with the enormity of this vocation. On the night before he dies, he pleads with God that there might be another way. But in the end, he submits completely to God's will. He becomes the perfect offering that we could never offer ourselves. And because his purpose is to restore that right relationship with God that sin destroys, he goes to the cross, forgiving the very soldiers who nail him there, and promising the thief beside him that paradise awaits. The resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate sign that there is now complete reconciliation with God. This reconciliation, this forgiveness is available to everyone. Therefore Peter, in the very first sermon ever preached, says to the people that they must repent and be baptised so that your sins may be forgiven. But what if I don't feel much of a sinner, and what if I can't work out how this forgiveness works? Sin isn't just the big things we do wrong. If it were, many of us might conclude we are doing okay. Sin is just as much what we fail to do, the good things left undone, as much as the selfish things we did do. And sometimes all of us lie in bed at night regretting missed opportunities for good or harsh words spoken. We all fall short of our own standards, let alone the standards of God. That is sin. And no, you can't reduce God's forgiveness to an easy formula. God comes to us as a person, not a statement. We need to know this person and enter into the story of his life. Then we can find ourselves like those first disciples, like those first listeners to the first sermon, faced with a question. Are we going to repent of our sins and follow in his way?